most human beings, many human beings, they don't like other human beings because they reflect something which is inside themselves that they don't like. But presently they think, no, 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 it's in you, you I'll carry this thing. But if you're empty of this trait that you see that you don't like, it couldn't work like this. If you're empty of it, then you don't see any judgment in it. This simple thing. When you're free of that judgment, it ceases to appear even external to you. You don't see it. Or at least you look towards it with great compassion and understanding. Because you know it's not intentional. Yeah? We are not really ignorant by choice. It seems like something is hiding the, the seeing. So when we see uh, someone uh, somehow triggers some discomfort within yourself, hmm? it's because somehow hmm, there's something there worth reflecting. You look at this. Now I take you a step further than this. This which you are seeing in others and in yourself, eh? this self that you find fault with is only the idea you have of yourself. It is not the true self. It is only the conditioned state. Hmm? The idea, the learned self, the acquired self, the conditioned self. This is where all the trouble seems to, this is where the bad smell is coming from. So that it can be clearly seen. If it is seen clearly what the mistake is, you don't have to necessarily do further work to remove it. Because the nature of the illusions is that when they are seen clearly, they lose their power. They lose the power to influence, hmm? to influence or to hypnotize the beingness when things are seen clearly. Therefore, perhaps the highest sadhana, the highest practice is in really clearly understanding. Because in understanding you don't have to move and go anywhere. But somehow the correct responses come into play and in no time all that noise is removed from you because it is not real in the first place. Only your belief makes things appear to be real. You have believed a lot of things into existence which actually are not true. Not because something appear is evidence of its reality. Not because something appear means it's real. There are many things, most, that appear. It's, not, it's a fabrication of the mind. Not true, not real. This you're coming to complete clarity about it. And in just seeing, in that perfect understanding, a great unburdening begin for you. When you, mm, when you have seen uh, what I feel I've been privileged to come to see, then there is this. Mm, I don't know what the right word is, but there's some urge inside that all beings must come to taste this. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to anybody. In fact. And yet we are inseparable from this. And it seems a real mystery that we who are this, beyond suffering, still we come into this taste of suffering and, and pain and friction, war, all this, all this um, friction, struggle, pain, that seems at times overwhelming. And yet, at the same time, we are pure bliss, pure perfection, you see. I am not paying you a compliment when I say these things to you. But if satsang has any value, it's simply wiping the eyes clean. To see something which is not on the outside of the eye. It's like wiping the eyes to see behind the eyes. That one who sees through these eyes. Sometimes I ask people, who is looking through those eyes? And an intelligent response came and says, conditioning is looking through these eyes. I said, this is true. But what is looking at the conditioning looking through these eyes? And silence came.
I just want to share again and remind you that nothing takes you out of you. It's a myth. And it looks like six billion around people on the planet believe it. Hmm. Such is the power of not only thoughts but belief. Uh, in the same way that it says your fingernail can cover the sun. A concept believed in can hide your intuitive recognition of the truth. Yes, simple like this. I don't know what has caused us to fall asleep, but I know what makes us wake up. And I know that one which never sleeps. And the words that are spoken are addressed to that one. It's never a person speaking to another person. I don't have this feeling in me. But more that consciousness or beingness is conversing with itself about itself. And immense joy and power is released in that recognition. I take it that each one came because some inexplicable power drew you here. Maybe we are not sure about this. Some people come only half a satsang and they go, that's okay. Maybe the beingness causes that also to happen. But my feeling is, in gatherings just like this, that's happened over thousands of years, innumerable beings have awoken to the truth about themselves. Okay. Finished. I don't feel that we here are a lesser group, less competent. I can't say what and who will be the ones who will step out of time. But something causes this mm, satsang to take place. And I know in my heart that it never wastes itself. Mm? And because the conversation that arises from the heart will only flow if it is pleased to be both the speaker and the listener. This joyous world, a divine play, all this we are. Om. Oh.